Welcome to Kingdom Come Ministry, where our leaders are Apostle William Rogers Jr. and Pastor Dr. Donna Rogers. Today we agree to let the Spirit of God use the Word of God to transform our lives. Receive life transformation today. Now, let's enter into the service of the Lord. receive the word today. I want to remind you as to one of the many wonders relating to the resurrection is there is no condemnation for believers in Christ because Christ has taken the punishment for sins and the law of the spirit hath set the believer free from the law of sin and death. somebody lift their hands in this place. Today has nothing to do with any of us in here. Come on, y'all can do, y'all can do him better. Come on, you can still do better than that. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. 
what you got going on after the service. Bless him in this place. Give him a wave, all friends. For the beauty of his holiness. Uh, we were in God's mind even before the eons of time. We was in God's mind even before. Come on, y'all go ahead and minister unto the Lord. Minister unto him. Minister unto him. It's all about him. It's all about him. Y'all know y'all blessing people all over the globe. You're blessing people all over the globe. over me all last night. You didn't allow any hurt, harm, nor danger to befall me. You stayed the hand of death another time. You robbed death of an opportunity to steal our lives. You watched over us. You kept our bed in sickness. We're in our right mind. We know our name. We know our baby's names. We know what day it is. It's the Lord's day. It's resurrection day. Somebody give him a resurrection praise right now. Speak forth life. Speak forth life, new life, resurrected life in your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, in every cell, in every neuron, in every neurotransmitter, in your bones, in the marrow, in your cells, in your blood, in your body, every system be made whole right now. Somebody give him a shout of praise for help in your
shoe You're the lifter of my head Lord, you belong to me If nobody else want to claim you If nobody else claims you I'll take you for mine You can have this whole wide world But I'll Take Jesus in mind. He belongs to me. It's personal. It's a personal walk. It's a personal love of care. Somebody don't want to let that go. And that's all right. It's the Lord's day. Now just thank God for the person standing to your side next to you you look at you look at miracles signs and you look at miracle signs and wonders on your right side on the left in front of you behind you miracles I don't think none of y'all ran up here and touched me, did you? I felt somebody touch That's why I started looking around like... Marcellus, don't make me get on those drugs. Go ahead, get it in. Go ahead, get it in. Get it, 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 get it. Do anybody got a dance in this place? Do anybody got one? Anybody? Go ahead, get it. Get it in. This is your resurrection. Your resurrection is here. Is here. Let's clap on time. This right here ain't for offbeat clappers. It's on time. Go ahead. I don't know like you know. And you don't know like I know. Look at God. We made it. Somebody tell somebody we made it.
have done marvelous things in our eyes. Marvelous things. And the reality, he ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. God is at work. Let's honor our pastor, Dr. Prophetess Donna Rogers. Come on. Let's get it done. Get your devices. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. What I would like for us to do is, as a family, I want to hear your voices. And let's read this together out loud. But now, at this very moment, in Christ Jesus, you who once were so very far away from God, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You may be seated in the presence of our great and our majestic King. He's our Father. When my pastor had mentioned to me about today, I take it very serious. Whenever I'm to come before the Lord's church, because everything I say, it will be, and it can be, used against me in that day. For every idle word Jesus said that we speak, we will either be condemned by it or we will be justified made right by those words. This is just not a holiday. This is reality, what happened on this particular day. So Holy Spirit said, look at something, but now at this very moment in Christ Jesus, you, me, who once were so very far away from God, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9 and verse 22, the apostle says, and almost all things are by the law, Purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. Today I want to leave in your spirit rights to the resurrection. Rights to the resurrection. Rights are simply standards that recognize and protect the dignity of all human beings. Now this is a subject in and of itself that I probably could teach about a year on just our rights as people. We also have kingdom rights. These particular rights of the kingdom, they allow you and I direct access to the king himself. Because I want to show you something that ties in with both of these particular scriptures that something had to happen for any of these scriptures that we read to have been written. Something had to happen. 
If there was no death from the bloody cross, there would be no need for rights to the resurrection. You've seen the depictions of the Calvary experience. The shedding of blood has long been seen as an appropriate payment for appeasing deities, gods, small letter G-O-D-S, or for providing justice or revenge for a wronged party. And God is no different. His covenant was ratified in blood. And the shedding of blood is required to atone for our sins against him. And the blood was shed to make atonement for our sins against him. While this can be an actual gruesome thought, bloodshed is nonetheless a critical element of the salvation that we can freely, we don't have to pay for salvation. Our payment was made in Jesus' blood. So we receive salvation freely. I want to leave you with four points today. Number one is the downfall and the destruction. I am so concerned about the Lord's body being well taught. I've always been concerned about the Lord's body being fully equipped and that the Lord's church is taught well. We have a teaching priest in this house. So I want to talk about basic, simple things, simple, basic things that we've heard before, but it's these simple, basic things that help to keep us believing in God, trusting in God, and even hoping in God. So we see the downfall and the destruction. When God cast Adam, you call him Adam, that's fine. When God cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, he made clothes for them from the skin of an animal. We see this. I'm talking to many that have heard it, but let me just help you be reminded. Genesis 3, 21. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. Now, implicit in this provision was a blood sacrifice. If, if God... took an animal. It didn't say they made the clothes. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. An animal had to be killed so they could be covered. We can go home now. He died so you could be covered. His blood was shed so your nastiness would be Now, now, now we could we could go so many directions with this. If God wanted the man and woman to be covered. Why then do we want to expose people? If God wants them to be covered, he could have left them naked. 
acting the way they were acting. But God was watching them. Before that, the man had to own up because God wants to know where he was. Man, where you at? He ain't, he, he ain't looking for your wife now. He just, where you at? You, know, you got some that can't have function if their wife don't do it. You know, some of y'all won't even come to church. If, you, if your wife don't come, you sure ain't coming. But if you didn't know it, she ain't dying for you. She's not going to do it. She's not being judged for you. So let's get back to this blood sacrifice. Never before had any one of God's creatures experienced bodily death until then. That death was necessary to provide covering for Adam and Eve's sin, a poignant picture of the reality that we cannot stand before God on our own merits. The blood became an even more important symbol as mankind drew further away from God. When he chastised Cain for killing Abel, God said that Abel's innocent blood cried out to him from the ground. Genesis 4 and 10 says, the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's innocent blood is crying out to me from the grave for justice. Don't let him get away. He killed me. When he was my brother. So the first murder we see, it was here. The second point I want to show you is the covenant and consecration. When God rescued the children of Israel from Egypt and set them apart as his chosen people, Deuteronomy 14 and 2 says, You have been set apart as holy to the Lord your God, and he has chosen you from all the nations of the earth to be his own special treasure. And then God, he ratified his covenant and consecrated the articles of worship for the priesthood by the shedding of blood. The books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, they covered the wide range of animal sacrifices instituted by God to serve several purposes related to the cleansing of sin. They covered the wide range of animal sacrifices. These first five books, we see things happening that many have forgotten. First, the blood was used ceremonially, purify the articles that would be used for later sacrifice. This included the altar, its utensils. You all have to realize these were over two million people. That's a lot of animals that these people was gathering, bringing in there to be cut open and killed and sacrifice on an altar in behalf of the sins of the people. All these animals, other items for the tabernacle, the priestly garments, what you see with me on, the buttons that's on this robe is symbolic of the stripes that Jesus was beat with. So when you see the buttons that's on this robe, each one of them are symbolic each one is symbolic to the Lord being beat, even the high priest himself. Book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 18 says, that is why even the first covenant was put into effect with the blood of an animal. 
Then he said, this blood confirms the covenant God has made with you. And in the same way, he sprinkled blood on the tabernacle and on everything used for worship. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And next and most importantly, a daily, monthly, yearly sacrifices detailed in those books were ordained to atone for the people's sin. They were to be offered in cases, listen at this, of deliberate sinful actions against God and even for unintentional sins. They covered the community at large and each individual person. So where do we find that validation of the premise? We find it when God tells Moses, you go and you tell the people to put blood over their doors because a death angel is in the land. But you're going to have to put blood over your doors and when that angel sees the blood, he will have to pass over it. That's where we get Passover from. This is where we get the Passover because God, listen at this, we're going to get into this, man. God promised what he was going to do. I'm going to pass over it. That death angel going to pass over it. That's another topic we could talk about. For anyone to die, there must be an angel of death in the hemisphere or the atmosphere or stratosphere. Yes, yes. There's angels in this room right now. When you get in your car, there's angels surrounding you even in your car, outside of your cars. The blood covers the community at large. This is why we have intercessory prayer. See, you don't understand. It's, it's not for your prayer debut. It ain't for your prayer debut. An intercessor is someone who stands in between. You stand between God and you stand between the person to touch God and to touch the person. What does this build? A cross for them to go over. That's what intercessory prayer is for people that can't pray, is for people that don't know how to pray, is for people that need help that you don't even know. Your prayers leave the building and they ascend into the heavenlies and they Get into the hemisphere and the stratospheres and it can be in a totally different country of what you interceded for. Who would dare not to pray for people? The third is substitution and sanctification. However, the slaughter of the sheep, the rams, the bulls, the goats was not sufficient to completely blot out the people's sins before God. Not only were such sacrifices only temporary solutions, but the people returned to their sins time and time again. How many animals where they gonna have to kill all the time. Cause you know, people struggle with sin. Oh, wretched man. Who shall deliver me? A perfect, complete sacrifice was needed to atone for the root causes of our sinful nature. So Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, was sent to earth to be that sacrifice 
for us. He took on our sinful human nature in order to be the one human being that could live a sinless life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he made Christ who knew no sin to judicially be sin on our behalf so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in a right relationship. See, it's nothing you've done is because of what he's done that made us right when we totally wrong. When we are absolutely wrong, he made us totally right. That's the best you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I'm, 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 come, 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 come on, give it to him. Give it to him. He made Christ who knew no sin to judicially be sin on our behalf. Jesus says, give me their sin. Because they can't do it. They're going to keep messing up over and over and over. Give it to me. That we would be made acceptable to him. Placed in a right relationship with him. By his gracious love and kindness. Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew's gospel. That his blood would be shed. For the forgiveness of sins. Now I want to show you this. He was prophesying before he physically done it. He had already been offered on the altar before the foundation of the world. Matthew says, chapter 26, verse 27 through 28, for this is my blood and the new covenant, new and better covenant, which ratifies the agreement and is being poured out for many as a substitutionary atonement, a substitution. See, the consistent teaching of the gospel is that his death on the cross was a substitutionary payment for our sins. And that that sacrifice, listen to this, is sufficient to cover all our sins. That blood covers everybody. Come on, give it to him. Get, come, come on now. He became your substitute. He took the hits. He took the spitting and lying and accusations because of us. For God so that he who that what who's Say it. Finish. Come on, give it to him. Y'all give it to him. Every time you think about messing up, give it to him. Every time you know you got it made up in your mind, this is what I'm going to, come on now. church is so religious the church is religious when God isn't the church is religious when God is not religious because religion is only a revelation with no true perspective that's why you got so many of them. That's why you got so many religions of the earth. When God isn't religion. He's God. He's holy. He's holy. He's righteous. 
He's just. He's true. Religious people ain't always right. Religious people is not always justice. They're, they're, they're not always just. Religious people are not always fair. We look down our noses on people if we don't like from whence they've come, but we didn't realize we have not come too far from them. Look at your neighbor. You ain't come far from them. That's the reason why some of y'all with them. It's in me to praise him. It's in me to bless him. Look at what God has done. He brought us out of darkness. We was messed up. We was jacked up. And some didn't even care. Remember, ain't no shame in your game. And he looked beyond all that. And he's still looking beyond. The day ain't even over. Ain't no telling what some of y'all are gonna do, and God still. God, God still looked beyond me. Because God knows about it. He already know. That's why he said, a good man can fall. And God still covers the blood that Jesus shed way back. The blood that gives me, it will never. never lose its power. It's power. No, it'll never lose its power. Now, y'all sit down. I told you, don't push me. <laughs> it ain't gonna lose its power. See, you keep living, you're going to get broke too. And to be honest, I think I was broke when I started. I think when I said yes to God, that broke me because it's not my will. So he says in Ephesians 1 and 7, in him we have redemption. That is our deliverance and salvation. I got my deliverance and my... I got my deliverance and my salvation. Come on, you said I got my deliverance and my salvation. Say it again. Say it again. Put your time in. Say it again. Yeah. 
I got him. And it came through his blood, which paid the penalty for our sin in the forgiveness. And listen at this part, the complete. We got that because of that blood. Somebody say, I am completely pardoned. Do y'all know what that means? Let me help you. It means your past sin, your present sin, and the sins that you will ever, that you will ever do. It has already been pardoned. So now, so now do y'all see when I say man is religious because man holds us. Men hold us to what we've done. But God said, listen, that's under the blood. And if you do it again, if you do it tonight, he said, you are completely Now listen to this. If anybody has ever been in prison, they don't want to go back. So we're not giving you a license because if you've been in prison, I won't. Will you struggle? Yes. Will you sin? Yes. But are you covered? You don't always want to sin. He said, complete pardon of our sin. That's why I tell you, the church people are religious people. Because when they get mad at you, or if they want you to be underneath, they're going to remind you. But the scripture said, as far as the east, And if you know anything about the East and the West, they never, they never even meet. They don't even meet up. So when God looking at us, he ain't looking at your, he looking at the blood. When he's looking at you, he's looking at the blood that was shed. Donald, can you just sing a little bit of that for me? When he sees me, can you just sing a little bit? When he sees me, sees his righteousness, sees his Holy Spirit filling up the emptiness. When he looks at me, Sees the blood that he shed. So glad that he sees himself each time he looks oh. at me. So glad that he sees himself each time he looks at me. Come on, y'all, give it up for Donald. Blood. This is what the message Bible says of this saying. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. This is the message Bible of the same scripture. We're a free people, free of penalties and punishments, chalked up by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free either, abundantly free. 
He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet Earth, it is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eyes on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose. He is working out in everything and everyone. And then 1 John 1 and 7, but if we really walk in the light, that is, live each and every day in conformity with the precepts of God, as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. This is what our pastor is talking to us about, community. Community. He with us and we with him. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin by erasing the stain of sin. See, this is why you got to get away from people that always want to keep you stained with their talking. You got to get out the company of negative words. Because can't none of us take back none of the things we've done. But I'm sure not going to sit under negative words. Period. That part. Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin by erasing the stain of sin, keeping us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. See, I really believe this is the missing piece that we could never provide to save ourselves. At the core of the gospel is a broken relationship with God. We cannot stand before God in our sin. And despite his love, without some kind of atonement being made on our behalf. In other words, God says, let me cover you because I don't want to keep smelling you. Because sin has a stench. So his blood covers. And, his, and blood has a stench too. And that was the reason for the fragrances in the tabernacle. Because the animals were offered up. So there needed to be a scent to cover the stench. And they offered up sweet incense as a sweet smelling savor. This leads to my final point. Relationship and restoration. The blood of Jesus covers our sins and allows us to return to that perfect restored relationship with God. It takes me back to the first scripture we read in Ephesians. But now at this very moment in Christ Jesus, you who once were so very far away from God have been brought near by the blood of Christ. This new covenant made through Jesus is what Paul is emphasizing. Chapter 9 and 12. He went once for all into the holy place, the holy of holies of heaven, to the presence of God. This is what happened after the resurrection. And it said, not through the blood of goat and calves, but through his own blood, having obtained and secured eternal redemption, that is the salvation of all who personally believe in him as savior. For if the sprinkling of ceremonially defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls, the ashes of a burnt heifer, is sufficient for the cleansing of the body, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal Holy Spirit willingly offered himself 
unblemished, that is, without moral or spiritual imperfection as a sacrifice to God. Cleanse your conscience from dead works and lifeless observances to serve the ever-living God. For this reason, he is the mediator and negotiator of a new covenant, that is, an entirely new agreement uniting God and man, so that those who have been called by God may receive the fulfillment of the promised in eternal inheritance since a death has taken place as the payment which redeems them from the sins committed under the obsolete first covenant. Just as this first covenant with Israel was made with blood, so too must this new covenant be ratified in blood. The beauty of this gospel is his sacrifice is lasting and sufficient forever. He's not going back to that cross. He ain't dying for us no more. The priests, they offered their sacrifices annually to continually consecrate the altar, purify their surroundings, but it was never a perfect and lasting sacrifice. They could cover sins, but only Jesus could cover sin itself. In Hebrews 9, for Christ did not enter into that holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the very presence of God on our behalf. So if you want to know what is Jesus doing in heaven, he is appearing before God on our behalf. In other words, when he see you sin, he turn and tell the Father, I got him covered. Don't kill them in their sin. Don't even let them die in their sin. And for you religious folk, that's why a thief had to go with Jesus. So Jesus could tell him this day, you going to be with me in paradise. So y'all quit judging people. He says, the very presence of God on our behalf. Nor did he enter into the heavenly sanctuary, offer himself again and again, as the high priest entered the holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer over and over since the foundation of the world. But now, once for all the cons consummation of the ages, he has appeared been publicly manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. I started off by saying if there was no bloody cross, if there was no death from the bloody cross, there would be no need for rights to the resurrection. The re resurrection is defined as restoring a person who was dead back to life. So we see that it was used 42 times in 40 different verses of the New Testament and come from the Greek word anastasis, which is also the root for anesthesia. And this is what Jesus provided for us. It's offering time, and this year I want us to put goodness out into the world. It's a simple idea, and sometimes simple ideas really stick. If you put good into the world, you will get good back out. This is especially true when considering tithing. When you sow good seeds, you reap good seeds. When you sow bountifully, you gain a great harvest. When you tithe, 
Be prepared for your generosity to come back to you in equal or greater measure. And while you're sewing now with your cash app or PayPal, let's remember what Hosea tells us in the word. He says, sow with a view to righteousness, reap in accordance with kindness, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes to rain righteousness on you. Be blessed.